so my knees are knocking, and I go up to the bench, you know, and and she says my name, and I tell the circumstances that, you know, my father used to handle all those things, and I simply forgot to pay the $10 fine. I showed them where I had paid the, got the safety inspection sticker the very next day. It wasn't like I was slacking, you know. And this judge apologized to me in open court that I had been arrested. So Miss Blank, you should never have been arrested. I am sorry this happened to you. Apologize to me. Now, had my skin been a darker shade of holy, I do not believe that would happen. My throat tightens up when I say that. Because now I get it. Because I never lived in that world where I had to mind what I said to an officer. I mean, I could do, maybe even curse an officer out. They wouldn't touch me. I live in Tulsa. It's about 20, 30 years behind California when it comes to human rights of minorities. And I can tell you story after story. and Especially helping with this petition, I did hear story after story. And a lot of times the people who signed the petition just wanted someone to listen to them. They wanted their story to be heard. And that moved me. And I did a show on uh, Blog Talk Radio. And they wanted to be heard. They would call in and talk about the human rights violations in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Some of them would call in from California. They moved as far as they could away from Oklahoma. And there's a good reason why. There's a reason why we're number one in the world for female incarceration. And there's a good reason why if you're skin tone is darker than the white wall, you are not going to get a fair trial in Tulsa. You will be violated in the Tulsa jail if your skin is darker than that white wall. I just... Violation after violation. And, you know, these two teenage boys, I think they were 15, the lady from California called... Is that beeping in? Allie? Oh, whatever. Um, two 15-year-old boys' nephews that were up for a murder conviction. And then one of the boys had two 15-year-old boys as witnesses that he did not commit the murder. And they take these two 15-year-old boys, African-American boys. They take them in a squad car. They take them down to the Tulsa County Jail, which is... Oh, God, what's that DA's name? Well, anyway, it's the county jail. And the sheriff is over at the county jail, by the way. The the very um, evil sheriff, Glanz, was over the, uh -oh, the county jail. And they take these two 15-year-old boys down to the basement where there are no, no cameras and there should be. They have them stripped down to their naked skin in this room. Now, remember 15, how maybe possibly you were modest and a little bit embarrassed because your body's going through all these changes. You know, young men, you know, they, they have some embarrassment. And they're down to the bare skin. And they're thinking they're going to get killed. They're going to get killed because they're witnesses to the innocence of a black teenage boy. That's an instance of where he stopped and helped the murder victim. And then they, they said he was the one that did the murder, and that was not true. They begin to taser these two 15-year-old boys in the basement of the Tulsa jail. They taser them over and over until they agree to change their testimony. And then people would say, well, when they got out of the jail, which they did, that... Why didn't they tell the truth? Well, have you been taken down to the basement of a jail? Stripped. There's no one stopped them. No one stopped them. And they could have killed them and taken their bodies out. And no one would have been the wiser. They know how to turn their cameras off. Would you have told the truth? I think even as a parent... I would tell my child to lie, to save their skin, and get them out of Tulsa as soon as I could. 
In fact, I think that's what I would have done at first. I would have found a place to send my children. You know, I've had to send my children away because of a host here on Spreaker. Because she's not all there. Because she's sick. Because she's evil. You must err on the side of judgment at all times with certain people. And that's true. Makes me sad to talk about all that. But it's real. So have my views of African Americans changed? Yes. You know, the lack of human rights in Tulsa, Oklahoma, more so. Because I thought Tulsa was more fair than what they said. And yeah, maybe there's a few problems here and there. But I did not realize how systematic the abuse was. I have mean, heard tell, tell of different murders, a suicide, and the police officers would not allow the witnesses to call the ambulance because they said it would be too much paperwork. Let him die. He was a Latino man. I don't know if he was legal or illegal. But does that matter? Just let him die? That's what our Tulsa Police Department does? Turns my stomach. If you're not white, do not come to Tulsa. You'll be severely disappointed and definitely discriminated against. And you'll have no legal recourse because the courts will not hear your case. That is a true fact. And if they do hear your case, you will not get the sympathy of a fair jury because it's systematic here. In 1921, the summer where the streets ran red, we had the worst race riot of our nation's history. And I hope it will be the worst race riot. You know, to see that many people die, well, even to see one die is a horrific thing. But there was over 3,000 killed in that race riot. It'll say 300 in the history books, probably Wikipedia. But there's mass graves in this one Rose Lawn Cemetery. And then they threw trucks full of people over into the Arkansas River. There's no way to count how many bodies they did then. They hung bodies from the Martin Luther King Bridge as it is so named today. A lot of death happens on that bridge. And the sheriff back then was just as racist as the one we kicked out. He would appoint... What? Mr. McCuggs. I'm the female angry Jew? Oh my gosh. I've had some inflammatory views. I'm discussing something with the chatter. I call you Stabathan all the times, and I am not your mother. Oh, I'm sorry. I really, I don't use Twitter as much as I, I used to. Last year at this time, I was tweeting like a mad woman um, <clears throat> for the CDC whistleblower. And we wanted to achieve 1 billion impressions, which we did, by the way. We created over 1 billion impressions. I think they're at 1 billion, 200 million right now, but kind of slowed down. But it was about January 14th when we reached 1 billion impressions. And that has never, ever been done before or since. If the political campaigns could catch on the impression train, they could get people to tweet pictures, stories, with the hashtag of, I don't know, Trump for president. If they were really media suave, but they're not. They're not. Is he ever going to sleep? Okay, but earlier in the podcast, I talked about We the People Oklahoma and updates on it. I also did a little ditty on Spreaker drama, you know, my viewpoint of it with some appropriate music, you know, because it's just crazy. It's just crazy. What did you dry, drop? And how happy I am that I'm off of morphine. Because I think it was keeping me depressed. I just couldn't pull myself out of that dark, dark depression. Even with a horrific thing that I have to go through this week, I won't be on probably. Maybe I can push it off till next week. Because I really don't want to go through this. I have to get a DNC. 
So, um, anyway, I mean, look here. Let's see. Really, you were that bored? What did you drop? What did you drop? Well, last year it was under Vaccine Truth News. I think it's uh, Vax Truth on uh, VAX Truth on Twitter at Vax Truth. And I would tweet like a fiend. Like I would have tweets that would be retweeted 400, 500, 600 times. Because we had certain leaders on the tweeting the hashtag CDC whistleblower. And we would all vie for that top spot, you know. And some people would get their tweets retweeted like a thousand times. And it was kind of crazy how into it we were. But we had a whistleblower. I mean, if your child is harmed by vaccines, has an extreme vaccine reaction, and you get someone that says, Yes, I have evidence that the CDC covered up harmful data pertaining to vaccines. You jump up and down because your dream, your prayer has been answered. Hey, 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 hey. I mean, some of them are a little bit extreme. Um, he's talking the, about them as stupid anti-vax idiots. You know what? Stabby, no, that's not going to happen. I'm not going to bow to the dumpster. I'm not going to do it. Okay, back to your comment of the stupid anti-vax idiots. If you're looking for a car and you want a safe car, you contact Consumer Reports. Maybe ask your neighbor, your preacher, your priest, your rabbi, whatever faith you believe. Oh, hold on. Why is it not working? Okay, there. Anyway, um, you ask about what their idea of a safe car is. What is their experience? You Maybe you look at some data on the Internet. You pick up a copy of Consumer Reports. Does that make you anti-car? Does it? Stabby, answer me right now. Does it make you anti-car? Neither should it be. If you look into vaccines, you're looking for the safest vaccine for your child. That doesn't make me anti-vaccine. I hope that I can get a hold of a safe vaccine that my daughter can tolerate. It almost killed her, that reaction. She was admitted to the hospital. You know, vaccines should be regulated too. You know who they're regulated by? Uh, loose, loose term regulated, I should say. Dr. Paul U. Thorson. And he's wanted by the FBI. He holds the copyright to a lot of these vaccines that are so-called regulated by him, by studies that say that they're safe, and they're not. They are not. How can you trust someone that's wanted by the FBI, um, one of the top ten in the world, to be hunted down? He holds the copyrights to some of the vaccines that he does studies on them to prove that they're safe. I mean, don't you see a bias here? And why wouldn't the CDC have follow-up studies considering one of their own is one of the top ten on the FBI most wanted list? He's in Europe. I am an expert. I've been at this a long time. Science is done on the... Oh, you so don't know. <coughs> See, you made me cough. You made me so angry. You got me coughing. Oh, I need some orange juice. Hold on. You have to admit, I know what I'm talking about. I know the language. And I know the experience. I'm not saying all vaccines are bad. I'm saying that some of the vaccines should definitely be taken off the market. And we should make all vaccines thimerosal free nothing wrong with that nothing wrong with that i look i'm i don't have a tinfoil hat give you know didn't you give the tinfoil hat to the dumpster didn't you oh my god well i think